Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic Now. Bit of deja vu. First of all, with the book launch, which has gone brilliantly. Thank you so much to everybody who's pledged to the Kickstarter. We've already surged through our original stretch goals and we're we're coming up with more. So um, they may be on the on the Kickstarter page already. We will definitely be adding stuff to the book as we get more pledges. So do keep them coming if you haven't decided to yet, but if you already have, thank you. Um, we are looking forward to bringing you Cracking the Cryptic's Greatest Hits, Volume 2 in due course. Now, Deja Vu also uh, because this puzzle, I don't know, I feel I've seen it before. And my memory for these things is not great, but this opening setup of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Sam often does things like that, of course, in all these slightly offset positions. Um, I mean, it's very neat. It's very neat. And Zycrazine, we've had on the channel once before. Zycrazine is not a new margarine or chemical. It's not a brilliantly bogus scrabble word. It is a constructor who uh, has featured on the channel before, so we've seen him before. I don't think that's a mistake. I was wrong about Crispy16 yesterday, who apparently we hadn't featured before, but I thought we had for some reason. Now, there's possible implication there that I've had a go at one of his puzzles before, but uh, I don't know. That might not be true. Anyway, um, this one is by Zycrazine. Now, don't forget to check out Patreon. Still six days left to enter the competition, the duality pack, which has been so popular, people joining it, solving it, just for the sheer fun of the puzzles, which is so clever. And check out our latest streams. Simon solved a crossword today, a cryptic puzzle, but Dave Gorman, the British comedian turned crossword setter, which uh, is absolutely genuine. He is literally one of the best in both fields, which is great. And uh, yeah, that's that's a puzzle already on the channel. Um, just loads going on. Check out the links under the video to find them all, including our apps. Now, what are the rules of good luck, bad luck? So, ah, it's an indexing puzzle, isn't it? Right. A digit appearing in the nth column of a row indicates the column where n appears in that row. So, if you have a three in this cell, that a digit appearing in the nth column, that's a three in the second column. And that means that two appears in the third column. So that is the rule. If you have a three in the second column of this row, it means in this row, two appears in the third column. Wow, okay, yeah, that is indexing. Um, now, digits, we've got some killer cages which show their totals. Uh, we've got a black dot, a single one, joining digits with a one to two ratio. Uh, but otherwise, we're using that indexing rule. So, I don't know, do, do give it a try. It's not a rule that, that I do very well with, but I do know one or two things about it. We've mentioned them in previous videos. So that's another aspect of deja vu, perhaps. But, uh, yeah, I hope I haven't solved this on the channel before. <laughs> You never know with my memory I might have done. I don't think so, though. I don't think I've solved it before. Um, that is the point, of course. So let's start the clock and let's get cracking. So, OK, I'm right. What I know about this indexing business is that those numbers come in pairs. So if you did have three and two there, as I was suggesting in the example, that three creates a two there. But that two in the third column creates a three in the second column. So they will always act as a pair. And you will always have a number of pairs in each row. And now theoretically, you can have self-referential numbers. You definitely can. That's more than theoretical. But theoretically, you could have more than one self-referential number in a row, as long as you had an odd number so that there could be pairs of index numbers, of mutually referenced numbers. However, however, there is only one number in each column 
that can be self-referential. Because in column 1, the only number that can be self-referential in any row is a 1. And look, here's the 1 in column 1. Here's the 2 in column 2. This is what Zycrazine has done. Here's the 3 in column 3, the 4 in column 4, 5 in 5, 6 in 6, 7 in 7, 8 in 8, 9 in 9. He's provided us with all the self-referential numbers. Now, the exciting thing about that is they're all gone. Every number we place in the grid is going to be mutually referential with another number. So we're going to have to find all the pairs of index numbers in this puzzle. He's already done the self-referential ones for us. Okay, interesting. Not sure how it helps initially, but it's worth bearing in mind as we go along that every number we've placed will place another number and be placed by another number. Okay, so anyway, what I'm going to first of all notice is that a lot of these, all the cage totals are 7 or 13, and a lot of them are barred from being one combo. So up here, 7 is normally either 1, 6, 2, 5, or 4, 3, but this one can't be 1, 6 because that's been used in the box already, the one has. Here it's now... F oh, this one's given. This is this can't be 4, 9 or 6, 7. That's a 5, 8 pair. This one we don't actually know much about. Um, I could put all the candidates in there, then remove 4, 3 and 1, 6 in two orders. So, okay, that's weird. Is this one... Yeah, this one is a given 2, 5 pair because it sees a 4 and a 6. This could be almost anything except it can't be 9, 4 or 6, 7, one way round each. This can't be 5, 2. If it's 4, 3, it's that way round, but it could be 1, 6. This can't be 5, 8. If it's 6, 7, I am just going to pencil mark these beasties to death. This can't have a 9 in it, so it's 8, 5 or 6, 7. And it can't be 8, 5, reading left, right. OK, there is the pencil marking done. Now, what is this telling us? Right, this cannot be a 2. Because that would say that this is, in fact, this has to be a 4. This is choosing where the 1 goes in this row. And it can't be in column 2 or 3 because it's already in box 1. So that has to be a 4, which puts a 1 there. And that's a self-referential pair. There's a There's a... 4 in column 1 and a 1 in column 4, they're referring to each other. Now, the Sudoku, or the killer aspect, says that that's a 3 to make this cage add up to 7. That is exactly the example I was not predicting, but making possible. So 3 and 2 are self-referential. This is either 5 or 8, and it's putting a 6 in either that cell or that cell. There's nothing to choose between those. I can't see why one would be wrong and one would be right. So let's go down here. Now, this is putting a 9. Yes, this is exactly symmetrical with that one situation. This is putting a 9 in either of column 6, 7 or 8. Well, by Sudoku, it can only be there. So that means this is a 6. And that's saying put 9 in column 6, put 6 in column 9. That's a 7 to make the cage total work. And that's dealing with an 8 there. Ah, this is a 1 or a 4, just by Sudoku. It sees 3, 9, 8, 7, 6, and a 2, 5 pair. And that's saying put 5 in either column 1 or column 4. Up here, this is 6 or 9, and that's saying put 5 in one of those. And I don't know what the answer is, so I'm not going to put 5. Look, Sudoku, 2, 2, we get a 2. That is saying that in this row, the 1 is in column 2, and they're a pair. So now we can do 5 and 4, that's a 2. And this is a new digit placed, it's saying put 4 in column 2 in this row, so we get a 4 there and they form a pair. Now this can't be a 4, 9 cage, this is saying put 1 in column 5, 7 or 8. Okay, let's do this cell, which is an 8. This is working again by symmetry. This is a very nicely symmetrical puzzle. The 8 puts a 9 there, the 5 puts a 6 there. Now I'm going to quickly diverge and have a look at this black dot. Yes, by there are only 6 Sudoku numbers that can appear on black dots. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 8. Well, you can see in this box we've used up 1, 2, 3, 4. So that is 6 or 8. 6 would always go with a 3 here, but that's impossible. So it must be an 8. For the 4 there, that takes 4 out of this 7 cage. Now, very importantly, these are new digits. So we've placed an 8, and that's saying put 3, because it's in column 3, in column 8. So that gives us a 3 there, which stops this being 3, 4. This 4 says put 3 in column 4, so we get a 3 there. Um, this black dot is the only thing that, well, I suppose, oh, there's a 1 there now. So this 6, 1 is done. And this is saying put 1 in column, no, that is a 1 in column 3. It's saying put 3 in column 1. That's what it's saying. This is a 6 in column 4, saying put 4 in column 6. That gives us a 9 by killer in column 7. So we put a 7 in column 9, and then we're just left with a 2 and an 8 that are mutually referential in the row. Yeah, this is progressing nicely. Um, nothing too terrifying. Right, 8 and 8 says there's an 8 in this cage. So it is a 5-8 cage. And this is saying put 1 in either column 5 or column 8. This is saying put 1 in either column 5 or column 8. So there's a sort of X-wing on 1s there, according to that. Now, we've also got to put a 9 in this box. So that goes there, and that says put 3 in column 9. So we'll do it. Then we get a 2 by Sudoku, which says put 7 in column 2, which sorts out the rest of that box. That says... 3 in column 6. Am I getting better at indexing, or is it really just fairly straightforward? Who knows? 1, 5, 4. I think those rows are all done. Let's just pick this last digit at random. That is saying 8 and 4 are mutually referential there. I mean, I think we're going to be done in a moment. That's a 5, 7 pair. Oh, this can't have a 6 in from the bottom cell, so we can place 6, 1, and 4 in the box. 6 and 3, 5 there. This is a 4, 1 pair. I mean, this isn't too bad at all. Hey, who ever thought I would say that about an indexing puzzle? Hopefully, I can do the rest just by Sudoku, especially if I stop mistyping. 3, 7, and 9 in this row. And then I'm going to rely on Zycruzine to have just created it so there are no actual errors. Um, 279 here, no. 9 and 7, 9 and 2, 7 and 1, 8 and 2, 9 and 6. And that finishes the puzzle. Wow, my goodness, finished in under 10 minutes. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. I did think at the beginning that given all the all the givens, it was a reasonably generous number of cages for this rule. But actually, once I noticed that the K, that the givens were all the self-referential digits, I did wonder whether whether that explained that it wouldn't be that easy. But, it, I mean, it wasn't easy, but it once you got started, that is a very manageable puzzle. So, genuinely approachable today, I think, uh, as long as you can understand the rule. And I'm not great with that rule, but I did understand it enough to solve the puzzle, thank goodness, and to get through it. So, thank you, Zai Cruzine. Not too bad for us today. Um, let us know how you got on with that. For some reason, I, as I always say, Apparently, computer programmers find indexing as an idea to be just second nature, uh, unlike most other people. But uh, well, I don't know. Is that hardwired into their DNA in some way? I'm not sure. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Do consider pledging to the Kickstarter if you haven't already. And hope to see you soon on the channel. Bye for now.